All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, uh, Levi. Mark. Glad to be here. My brother from, uh, you know, we go back quite a few years now, man. The time has been flying. It has been fine, man. But I, you know, I appreciate you uh, jumping on this broadcast and just sharing some of your experiences and your journey, and, you know, in your art, uh, doing this art journey. But I want to just, you know, I want to start, you know, go back to the beginning. You know, let me know how, you know, and the viewers know how you actually got started and what inspired you to really get into art. From the, you want me to go all the way back to the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Like, the beginning, where, beginning? Beginning, beginning. All right. Um, well, I think um, what, what initially inspired me was um, when I was young, my uncle, um, Earl, you met him. He came to one of my. He came to one of our shows actually over at um, Pyramid. Okay. Cool. Um, he uh, he was an artist as well. And um, when I was young, you know, he had been um, you know he had been in the newspaper for, for painting a mural on a city on I think it was on city city hall or something like that in Newark. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Um, for those who don't know, and um, when when I was a kid, he painted this mural in my bedroom. My whole bedroom wall was was um, painted with this mural of a lion and a panther fighting in the jungle, and I would go to sleep to that every night, you know. And um, I didn't realize it at the time. In fact, I'm, I've just started really realizing that I think that's where the inspiration came from, you know. Um, not just you know that particular piece being in my bedroom, but you know just the whole idea of what my uncle represented to me um, and. He, he passed two two years ago now. Um, may he rest in peace. Um, um, you know, and it was it was quite a loss. But um, he, um, I realized that um, you know a lot of my life I spent you know kind of chasing you know the um, the 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 man the myth you know, um, and um, so I think that's where again that's where it began. I started drawing you know. Um, my mother had, at a certain age, had brought out some sketches that he had done, um, some um, portraiture, you know, and I was just, I was fascinated by it, you know, and I picked, I picked up the pencil and um, just started working on things, you know, eye, eye here or nose there, you know, just trying to, you know, work on one piece at the time, at a time, and then put the whole, you know, the whole thing together, mm -hmm. which I've also learned is how I do things in life, you know. <laughs> one little one little piece at a time, and then I pull a picture together, you know. Um, and That's you know, it's 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 funny. This journey is um has enlightened me a lot about who I am and um why I do the things I do and why I'm in the place that I'm in, you know. Right. right. You know. That's how. That's that's the beginning for me. I believe. Cool. Yeah. You you mentioned Newark. I was actually going to ask you. You know, we all know about New York. You know, Philly to a certain degree, but is there an art scene in, is, is Newark known for, you know, visual artists or like what are they known actually for when it comes to the arts? Um, you know, I know quite a few hip hop artists from there, but yeah. are there any, you know, visual artists that, that that's from there or do you have a scene going on there? Well, yeah, um, you, you familiar with Frank Morrison? No, ah. I don't think so. Ah. That's, I that's what I gotta turn you on to. Yeah, Frank Morrison is a he's an animal. Um okay. but um he's I think he's he's born in Newark, but he grew up in Brooklyn. Um, okay. or vice versa, one or the other. Right. Um but he's he's um deeply ingrained, you know, in, in Newark and um from what from what I understand, you know. There's okay. a lot of artists that come out of there. There's a there's a um there's a growing art scene there. In fact, um, you know, if COVID doesn't get in the way, I plan on, you know, um, what is it, repatriating my home and going back and okay. um, this uh, festival that we, that we that's done there every year, North Arts Festival. Nice. Um, it's a pretty big deal. Um, nice. But yeah, yeah, it has, definitely has a, a bright um, art scene. I would love to check that out. Keep, keep me posted. I would love to check that out, you know. Okay. I want to. I want to start getting out and exploring more, 
you know, traveling more, exploring more the art scenes outside of this DC metro area. Yeah. But you know, speaking of the DC metro area, you know, I feel like there's been this great, uh, you know, th there's this cool simmering of 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 art bubbling in the city in this whole DC metro area right now. It feels like, you know, we're on the verge of really blowing and and going to a whole nother level. But from your perspective, what do you think? How do first? How do you feel about what's going on right now in the art scene in Mar uh, DC, Maryland? Um, I've, you know, I think I said it, and, and you know, we were saying it. You know, the three of us, you, you, you know, you mean uh, Rob, back in the day. And I think, um, I think we're on the verge of something, man. It feels like a, a bit of a renaissance, you know, of our own. It's not like Harlem, obviously, but right, you know, right. DC is going through its own, you know, its own renaissance. There's art everywhere. You know, and artists popping up all over the city, um, right. you know, doing incredible work. And I think, um, you know, this movement was what's happened with, you know, George Floyd and, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and then obviously COVID. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's shined a light on just how powerful, you know, art can be yeah. in, this, um, in this climate. And um, I think DC, you know, DC, Maryland, Virginia, you know, the art community in this area has really um, taken the reins, this thing, you know, and in a lot of ways, I think we've been blazing some trails for every, you know, everywhere throughout the country, you know, that big, you know, the Black Lives Matter mural on, you know, on the center of, of 16th Street leading yeah. to the White House. Yeah, that sparked a worldwide movement. It did. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's that's something to be taken lightly. That wasn't just born out of um, chance, I don't think. I think it was born um, out of the work that this that the, that artists in this area have been doing. You know, um, when the idea came about, I don't know if you're familiar with what happened. Um, the um, the call to have something done happened, you know, like that. And um, what the woman that's in charge of, and I don't want to do a whole lot of promo for, for, for people's organizations, but yeah. the woman that was in charge of that, that project, she had already done so much work with this, you know, this, um, this group of muralists, you know, in the city that okay. it was easy for her to make the call and be like, listen, you know, this is what's happening. We need you to get out and do it. And it, and it was like, she got the, she got the call for, for something, like do something like yeah. the night before they did it. So it happened wow. like that. It all happened wow. in like the span of, you know, less than 24 hours. Wow. Um, and that's laying it out in everything. You know, there's this one particular muralist that's really, really popular in the city. Like he has some incredible stuff throughout the city yeah. that she leaned on okay. to do all the schematics. Right. And all the other muralists was like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, yeah, how we yeah. paint that, right, that right, scale, right. you know, right. that clean, you know, and right. he was the guy that uses a lot of geometry in his work, okay. and so, you know, he was the one that she leaned on. Okay, and he came through, did all the schematics, and they they got it done, man, in, in like right. you know, fifteen minutes. You know, as well call, you know, that's amazing. So, had, it's had, an amazing story, but again, I think it's a it's a tribute to, you know, the work that that artists have been doing, you know, absolutely. in this area. Hats off to the mayor too for being courageous enough to, to to see that through. Yeah. You know, but yeah, this uh speaking of you know muralists and murals, uh, you know, I think it's a perfect time to transition into the work that you've been doing. You know, you've been doing some incredible work, you and uh the other uh ladies and gentlemen that, that's part of the collective that you're in. But you have been doing some incredible work that's been garnering national attention, you know, it's been, uh, you know, just been very influential and very impactful in our community. And again, it's been getting attention outside of this area, outside of the Washington DC uh, metro area. Uh, in fact, you know, we saw that the legendary hip hop artist, you know, Nas took a picture in front of one of your, your murals and yeah. that kind of went viral and, and, and uh, you know, that was the, I'm, I'm assuming a crucial point in your, uh, in this journey for you. you know, how, how did that feel? Oh man, it was, it was incredible. You know, it was, I mean, yeah. 
obviously growing, you know, growing up with Nas, essentially, you know, yeah. growing up with him and, um, you know, being, you know, being such a fan of his work right. um, is an honor, you know, yeah. is a huge honor. Um, but, you know, the, the, the movement that, you know, we've been fortunate to become a part of, um, it happened it happens so organically, you know, that it's, it's so hard to even, like, even at this point, it's hard for me to really, really even, you know, wrap my mind around what's been, what's been happening. Right. Um, but, um, the, um, I gotta, you know, I gotta give a shout out to the, um, Paints Institute, um, for awesome. the vision, you know, he had the, you know, the, that organization, it's a nonprofit, you know, they had the, um, the vision, you know, to, to create some of these opportunities, many of these opportunities, for, right. you know, for all of us. Um, and, you know, we've just been striking while our iron's hot, you know. We go from one point, it seems like we do one amazing thing and then the next amazing thing pops up the day, the, the, the next day and it's right. even more amazing, you know. Right. So, you know, it's just been a, a, a case of um, riding the momentum, you know, yeah. riding the momentum of what's going on and seizing an opportunity to say something. Like, yeah. Marla, you know me, man. I, you know, when I, when I paint, when I do my work, it's important to me to have something to say, you know, Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. just want to, you know, paint just to be painting or, um, you know, again, you know, make pretty pictures or whatever. I, I actually want to say something, I have some things to say, you know, and I think, right. um, you know, art gives me the, the ability to say them. Um, and yeah, I know. It's, I know. Uh, go ahead. So I, was, I, was, I know we were trying to uh, uh, we were trying to link up at one point uh, during this point during I think the height of the George Floyd uh, protesting and, and you were out busy you know I didn't know to what extent until you hit me I, I think we missed each other and you hit me the next day and you was like man you know I was out to like three four in the morning you know and working around the clock, you know, just really capturing. You said something to me that was really important. You said, this is history. You know, you're, you, you guys are, you guys have been a part of history and documenting history, you know, and it's cool to have, you know, the recognition and, and to have, you know, people taking pictures in front of your art. But beyond that, it's really a really important deep message that's been shared and sent about you know, social injustice and, you know, and creating, you know, art that speaks to that and be a, and, and bringing awareness. So it's like, no, you know, we may not be on the front lines protesting, but we're actually part of our protest and getting our message out here is creating these images. You know, we talk about, we talk about all the time how, you know, art has the, the, the it has the ability to change perceptions. It has the ability to change thought has the, the, the ability to change behavior, man. And you guys, I commend you guys for being, you know, again, being present, being being courageous enough to put yourselves out there and being the forefront of that movement. Uh, and and I'm just, I'm proud to know you, you know, you know, have my brother as part of, you know, the art community that's out there documenting and representing, representing well, I might add. So yeah. Thank you. Man, it, you know, we when we when when this whole thing started man we um you know it started off as and you know marlon i i, I had never even done a meal before you know I, all I, was, on campus. I was gonna ask you when did you did you get training bro listen i don't know if you remember you freestyle that yeah yeah, uh, yeah. the first the uh, first the first time i painted on a wall was with um our again an artist i'll never stop praising jay hudson uh, um he invited me out you know just on strength of you know my my works on canvas and knowing me you know and he was like bro whenever you want to learn i got you so opportunity presented itself through um culture coffee too you know miss v yeah um yeah. they were doing a, um an art crawl and he he was like he was he was kind of um orchestrating or um, managing the art crawl. And one of the one of the things that was a feature of the crawl was he was gonna be doing a mural on the side of a, of a brewery. And he was like, bro, 
Either you can have your own spot and you could go paint on canvas or you could come join me and we could blow out this wall. And I was like, bro, say no more, I'm there. And so I went, you know, and I trained, you know, on that wall under him, but all I did really was prime it, you know, and make a couple marks, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, and he took it from there. Okay. You know, but, but he taught, he taught me, you know, the, he, he put a can in my hand for the first time, you know, okay. and okay. after that, I was just like, I mean, it, it, it took, it took away that, ang- you know, I get low anxieties, you know, about new things or whatever, and going down new directions. Cause I take some of the pride in what I do. Right. Um, and, you know, he, he, he sort of helped remove the anxiety because now I had, I have I had done it, done okay. something before right so what ended up happening when COVID struck i was um there was this there was this gentleman that i had met years ago um and he he had been reaching out to me over the course of you know the the year when, we, when you and i were, were, were doing our, our work together okay um he was reaching out to me he wanted to you know he wanted to connect and i was like bro you know i just like we just could not connect you know just busy, you know? Right. So right. he finally hit me during COVID. And of course, everything has slowed down during COVID, you know? So he was like, listen, you know, I got this mural job. I want you to come out, you know, and do it. And I was like, and when, you know, and you know me, I was like, hold on, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, are, we, what are we talking about exactly, you know? Yeah. And he was like, listen, we got like, we got like five murals and I want, you know, I want you to be, I want you to do it. You know, it's 25 total murals. We're doing five each. I have five artists that I want to do five each. Wow. You know, one of them. And I was like, wait a minute. I said, so wait a minute. Let me ask you something. I said, if, do I have to, are you telling me I got to compete to get these murals? <laughs> or well, I, mean, me I, I got these murals? Right, like, right, right. All you got to say is you'll do it. And it's yours. So I was wow. like, wow. So, you know, I went to heat and I was like, what do you think? You know, she was like, you got to do it. You know, you got to do it. And I was, I was, you know, I was nervous because I've never done murals before. Right, right. So I go out to the first mural, bro. And you know me, I'm, I'm you know, you know how I am, right? Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. first, the very first mural I did, I, love I was it. up all night making <laughs> stencils, bro. Cutting out stencils, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, I didn't want to get to the wall and just totally just, you know, right, right, the bed, you know. Right, so right. I made all these stencils and I go out and I got my stencils, you know. Yeah, yeah, bro. I did that one mural, everybody else came out, you know. It turns out it was people we knew, you know, okay, um, you know, Luther, Luther was there, sweet, Sean was there, you know, SP, yes, yeah, and um, Des, turns uh, out you were. You had reached out to Daz years ago. I didn't yeah. realize that's who you had talked to. Yeah. Which was so crazy. That's like one of my, that's my dog. He lived down the street from me, bro. Wow. He just texted me while we was on this call. That's my man. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's we dope. out there doing this wall and they like, you know, they're just doing it, you know, because yeah. they've been doing them, you know? So I was like, all right, bro, you know, enough with the stencils. You know what I mean? So I came out the next one. You know, the first one, I, you know, I did what I did, you know, and then it just, progress it just progressively got better and I, I got more and more comfortable yeah. you know from, from one to the next right but the crazy thing is when he said we got five murals I'm thinking we got time he was like bro in five days wow so we had to do five murals in did, five days how did that go for you bro it was crazy <laughs> but I did it I did it nice. I did it you know I I was able to rise, you know, to the call. You know, it was about COVID, you know, positive messaging. Yeah. And um, you know, just trying to get something um meaningful, you know, yeah. out on yeah. these walls. And um and it turned out to be a blessing because while we were out there, I had, you know, Jabril and my son, the baby boy, he had him out working with me, helping me that day. And um Jaron from downtown DC Bay, he happened to be walking down the street. And he saw me and Jabril working on a mural. And he was like, listen, we have a project coming up. And I want you guys to be involved. And I was like, at this point, I pointed him to John. John Chip, you know, the guy that runs paints. Yeah, yeah. And um, next thing I know, we we setting up a meeting to view Gallery Place. 
it was crazy. So we go to Gallery Place. Gallery Place is a ghost town. Right. A ghost town. It's not, you know, just boarded up, you know, um, establishments. Right. And we're surveying this. And he's like, I'm thinking, you know, we got to do a look. He's like, no, all of this. All of the storefronts in Gallery Place, we need to get them done. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Again, I'm thinking, well, how long we got? <laughs> He's like, tomorrow. Wow. So wow. It, it was crazy, man. So we went about assembling people, you know, bringing people together. And um, yeah. and it was, again, it was like, it was overnight. Yeah. And, um, you know, my kids ended up coming out to help out. They got a wall, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and again, it was historic. But when I got there, listen, bro, you talk about the history of it. Yeah. When I got there, I was like, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the space and I'm like, yo, this is gallery place, you know? This this where we did two DC with all my art, you know? This right. is like, right. this is it, you know? Right. This is gallery place, and I'm like, yo, this is historic. But I was thinking, it's historic for DC. Right. I had no idea that it was going to balloon into yeah. what it ballooned into, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, you know, unfortunately, you know, George Floyd ended up like happening right then. Right. And so, you know, the message was clear. Like we we put COVID away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we jumped on, you know, social justice. And um it couldn't have been more apropos. It couldn't have been um it was bro, it was tetragrama time, you know. It was it was that moment. It was that perfect moment. It was yeah. that touch, you know. Yeah. And you know, you we started doing these pieces. And the guy who manages Gallery Place, the properties in Gallery Place, at first he didn't get it. But mm -hmm. as he started walking around and seeing things take shape, it started to come become clear to him. Mm -hmm. He walks by, and I'm doing this painting, this mural of. It says um, justice now, right? And it's huge and it has a, a, you know, I did this silhouette because I wanted, I wasn't that great at murals yet, you know? So I wanted more importantly than me making a pretty picture, I wanted to make something that was meaningful and impactful. And so what I decided was I was gonna do these silhouettes that would allow people to get inside the silhouette and hold up a sign, a, you know, a petition saying, you know, either, you know, Black Lives Matter or we want justice or whatever. And um, while I'm painting that, D.C. Metropolitan Police lines up behind me mm. and they're just watching. Mm. And they kept they captured photos of it. And it's just an iconic moment. And it's like, wow, yo, this is this is crazy. This is crazy yeah. what's happening right now. Yeah. And he caught on. Yeah. And so at that moment, he was like, listen, I have a property over at what's now Black Lives Matter Plaza. OK. I want you guys to go over and put murals on that property. Mm. And bro, again, tomorrow. Right. It wasn't like it wasn't right. like in a couple right. of days or right. 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 You know, right. you, no, it was. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, we packed our bags and, and headed over, man. You guys had the built in inspiration though. You know, yeah. you guys, it was so much it was so much going on socially. Yeah. And I would imagine that, you know, you guys were filled with so much emotion that that was a, a great outlet for you as well to be able to pour all those emotions into uh those murals. And it came out. It came out in the work, man. That uh, the silhouette when I want that. I'm glad you went to that. That that's just a really, really powerful piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did one Met Medic Last Matter, I believe. Yeah, man. That's that. Was, Bro, I, mean, I got to tell you the story about that, man. I don't know if have I told you this. No, nah, no. Nah. So when I got there that next day. What we were informed was that we'd be working at the medic station. So, you know, me, I'm like thinking, I'm thinking all night. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm like, what am I going to do? Medics, medics, medics. What, you know, what do I do about that? You know? Right. So 
I, I really I had one idea which I did on the right on the right side. I had the black li- black black medics lives matter, and yeah. that's the, the the you know the the military medic you know just is what it is, right? Right. But then I had to do the second one, and the second one was right there at the medic station, and I had no idea what to do. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let me just what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to the medics that are here. So I, you know, I talked to one of them to, to, I started talking to the medics and I'm like, listen, if you were curating this, you know, and you know, you, you spoke to the, to the artist that was doing this mural, what would you, what would you tell him you wanted to see, you know? So they started giving me a bunch of bad ideas, you know, you know how that goes. But as we started talking and I started asking more questions, they started telling stories. And the story that just grabbed me was when the president came out for his photo op at St. John's Church, which was diagonal to where I was working. I could see the church wow. and the steeple from where I was working. Okay. And they were like, well, on that day, when he came out to, you know, to pep, you know, have his photo op, right. and he tear, tear gassed the protesters, right. he also tear gassed us. We were stationed uh, at St. John's. Oh, wow. They were stationed at the church. Wow. And he ran them off. And as they're being run off the church, they're still going back in mm. to help. You see what I'm saying? So they're, 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 being, they're fleeing because they're, you know, they're suffering as well. Right. But at the same time, they got a job to do. So be. they're reaching back in yeah. you know, and helping people. So I was like, that's it. That's my story. That's my narrative. I got to capture this. Absolutely. So Absolutely. they had already, they had taped on the wall, the word medics. Right. It was in tape. It was in red tape. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to preserve that. So I left the tape and I spray painted around the tape mm. and then pulled the tape off and it left the impression that they had written Okay. with the tape. Right, 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 right. On the wall next, you know, around it, all around it, they had all these notes you know, 50,000 people on August 8th, or, you know, on whatever day, July, whatever, March to the, to the White House. This many people on this day. We need bandages. We need this. We need that. All their notes were on the board. Wow. I was like, I'm not painting over that. That's dope. That's so dope. all of that stuff is still on the board. Right. And right. then, you know, I start painting this guy, this, this medic, this black medic, yeah. And as I'm painting it, not even realizing it, the medic starts to look like one of the medics that's there. And and all of them are like, hey, yo, that's Jay, that's Jay. You know, so they excited. They think I'm painting them, I'm painting Jay, the medic. Right, 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 right. It was, bro, it was so incredible, man. And so, you know, I put a I put a little St. John's church in the left-hand corner yeah. of the mural. And then I have like mist coming across the board. Yeah you know, to indicate the tear gas. And then the medic has a tear coming down, you know, mm. and he's reaching back in with a bottle of water mm. because they were like, that's the most important thing we had to do out here because people were, were dropping from dehydration and heat exhaustion. And, you know, so we pass out a lot of water, you know? Mm. And so that's how the, the whole narrative played out for that particular mural. Yeah. And it is, to me, it's my favorite piece because it preserved their story and yeah. nobody thinks about the medics. Nobody thinks about, those nope. are the heroes, they were heroes, bro. They're heroes, they're, they're yeah. sort of like an afterthought, but they're, the, they're, on the, they're literally on the front lines and they're yeah. the heroes of this thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. so that's, that's how that played out, man. And we approached that thing, you know, everything was, was about you know the story what's the narrative what are we what are we talking about here you know yeah and um it's it's, it's just been an incredible ride man we then had the honor of being able to do the murals on saint john's church which was just that's I mean, it's just putting a bow on it you know yeah yeah you know? tell it's been resonating man with people and it's really been creating this 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 vibe and this this insp- uh this inspirational message for people because, you know, it's been, you guys have been covered from 
ABC News to, I mean, who else is, you guys have, I've been seeing all the, you know, media coverage of it. I mean, that's, that's. Bro, it's been crazy. We've been CNN, um, ABC. Yeah. Um, not National Geographic. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I got two stories in there, believe it or not. Um, who else? Um, uh, Reuters. Wow. Um, wow. What's the name of the, the, the there's a publication in um in Dubai. Mm. It's it's going international. Like it's been it's I mean I can I, I, I can't even name all of the coverage that we've been getting. It's been crazy. That's great, man. Well deserved, man. And it's, I can't think of you know, during this pandemic and you know, God God bless, you know, all the people that are, you know, suffering loss and that have been sick. But you know, I like to what I've been sharing is that we got to stay positive and op optimistic about this time, and do you know put our energy into things that are going to produce and yield positive results when we come out on the other side of it. Because we're going to get through this, right? Yeah. Yeah. We cannot go back to what the old normal was, but we're going to get through this, and we're going to create a new normal. And when we get to the other side of this, though, we want to position ourselves to be in a better place, to be, uh, you know, whether it be our businesses, our brand, we want to have them positioned to really go to the next level, you know? And I admire you for staying busy through this period. You know, I admire you for challenging yourself because I, I really feel, and it may sound cliche, but I really believe that you can't get to greatness without getting uncomfortable. You know, as they say, you got to be uncomfortable to get comfortable. Yes, right. you, you know, essentially have done, you know, you've challenged yourself, you've stretched yourself, you've, you know, got uncomfortable with the murals and look at what has happened as a result of that. You know, I mean? all of these opportunities have opened up because you took those chances. And that's what I try to share with the artists that I work with. You know, you have to really, you know, take some risk, you know, and put yourself, put yourself uh, in the room, as you used to say, that's you right. know. That's you right. Say, you know, put yourself in the room and let you know, let the opportunities that are meant for you happen. And I believe that's been you know our journey uh, since we started working together back in 2013, 14. You know, it's it's put yourself in that position, allow the universe to come together and conspire for you, for to to bring about the opportunities and the things that you really want to happen. So. You know, again, I commend you for that, man. And uh, you know, just switching gears for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about? I know you did collaboration, but Urban Outfitters. Can you oh. talk about that for for a minute? That's How did another, that come about? All right, that's another one. That's um, wow. So um, Urban Outfitters came about as a result of um the work we did at Gallery Place. Mm. Um. Des, Des, Des did a um he did a mural of a dove okay. on the, the um on their storefront, okay. and you know they were just you know they were just wild by by just all of it, um, and what it did it opened up a conversation, you know, about okay. um what they could do to reach back into the they you know they they were struggling a little bit with their um their uh, public perception in terms of diversity and um, obviously in, in inclusion. And so um, it, 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 it ended up being a perfect opportunity for them to do something meaningful. Okay. And so the Paints Institute, you know, John Chisholm, he went about having, you know, the, the conversation, you know, how is it that you guys can make uh, make an impact in this movement? How is it that you can, you know, go about changing the perception, you know, um, that that you guys have, have, you know, have fallen into? Um, here's a way to do it. You know, you purport to be, you know, an urban, you know, an urban brand. Um, well, we have schools, Paints Institute um, donates, you know, funding and um, classes and training 
um, to schools, kids, okay. and in 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 the city, in the city. Yeah. So, um, you know, at risk youth, et cetera. And so, what this what this ended up being was an opportunity to to marry, um, uh, you know, philanthropy, I guess, and um, creating an opportunity for not only artists, you know, um, in the community, but also um, we adopted a school through the program. So some of the proceeds from the um, the t-shirt line, which was the idea, which was, you know, to be the catalyst for um, fundraising for this program mm -hmm. for um, a local DC school that we adopted. Right. So, yeah, so um, there's a, there's an, an element of you know financial support, but there's also an element of like we, we plan to bring them in and do training, you know, for you know an, an arts program. So it's STEM, it's uh, STEAM, you know, science to you know, but art obviously added to you know mathematics. Okay. Um, so STEAM program, and in okay. the arts portion of the of of that program, you know, we'll be training young kids. You know, with you know they come out and apprentice during mural you know, mural work and um, Urban Outfitters was, you know, was gracious enough, you know, to take on a challenge and um, give us give us that opportunity. And uh, Very it cool. was incredible, man. They also let us do murals. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to get down and see my mural in the, um, in the storefront. Have you seen it? I, I haven't seen that one. Oh man, I did a John Lewis mural. Um, I don't know, I, I, well, I've seen it online, but I haven't seen it in person yeah i've seen the medics lives matter in person and i've seen the uh i drove past the, the silhouette the black lives matter okay. all the names and uh, it's different in person man i gotta tell you it's it's yeah. powerful it's powerful seeing the images mm -hmm. you know, on social media and online but seeing it in person man it's like wow yeah it's, it's breathtaking yeah yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I got to get down there and check out the John. Look, you said John Lewis. Yeah, yeah, did a John Lewis. You know, because it's um obviously we're doing a drive to vote, right? And um, right. um, voter registration. You know, that's important. That's an, another important element of all of this, and another one of those um issues. You know, that we've taken on. Yes. Um, we did a um. <laughs> I mean, it's another unfortunate passing. But you know the passing of um, excuse me, of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, we um, we were doing an event at um Black Fin, our Black Fin, Marlon, our Black Fin. Wow. <laughs> wow. We're doing an event at Black Fin. How it, it all comes full circle, man. All comes full circle. It's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, so we're doing the event there, and um. Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies, you know, right in the middle of this project, you know, and so, you know, the obvious shift in gears was we have to honor her. Right. And um, so, you know, we did a mural for, for you know, honoring her on that, and that just went viral, it went crazy. Um, and, you know, this voter registration portion of, you know, um, uh, you know, just political responsibility as well as all of these other, you know, other things that we, you know, we're trying to do the exact change. Um, voting is one of the, you know, most one of the key elements, you know, to bringing that about. And so right. with the passing of John Lewis and what he meant in terms of, you know, um, suffrage and it was it was just another one of those. It's just so crazy this time that we're living in, bro. It's like this. Yeah. All of these things happening, like converging at this moment. Yeah. It's like. That's, you know, early when we first started this interview, I was talking about how I feel like um, I'm coming to a point in my life where I'm really getting clarity yeah. on who I am and yeah. what I'm, in a lot of ways, what I'm here for, you know? Perfect. And I, I believe, and I've said this, I believe that this is why I'm here. This is the reason. One hundred percent. DC. I'm from. I'm from. I'm from Jersey. I'm from New York. Yeah. My parents moved to, to Carolina. Yeah. Why am I in DC? Yeah. Why am I here? You know. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I I was a history major. 
I was one of those kids when I was in college. I was walking around with a backpack and yeah. you know literature in my backpack, and I'm yeah. telling people about about knowledge and you know yeah yeah and doing all of this stuff and not even really realizing like all of these things someday are going to converge. Yeah, you know, and it's all going to make sense someday. Like, you know, you're, I'm painting, I'm drawing, not necessarily painting. In those days, you know, I was drawing. Right. But I'm, I'm drawing and I'm preaching and I'm learning and I'm doing all of this stuff. And they, yeah. they all seem so splintered. Yeah. But then I reach this moment, this moment in history. Yeah. And they all converge. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing, bro. It's an amazing, amazing, amazing journey that I've been on. It's, it's amazing. As you were saying that, I think of the, you know, the, that, that famous quote, you know, they say, you know, the most, the two most important dates in your life is obviously the day you were born and then the day you figure out why. Right. You know, and you, you, you figuring out your purpose, man. And that's a beautiful yeah. thing. You know, I think it's, you know, again, we have to look at this period in time and, and have a very positive outlook on it. There's so much innovation yeah. uh, that's going to come out of this and that's coming out of this, you know, uh, people are finding out, you know, like you just said, their true purpose. You know, we're we're getting recalibrated with things that are that really matter, that's really important. You know, um, our family. You know, we've been stripped away from, you know, a lot of you know frivolous things that really don't matter. You know, we're getting back to the basics in many many respects. Right. But um, just keeping this on the art, you know, art vibe. I wanted to also touch on. You know, one of the number one questions, switching gears again, one of the number one questions I leave by is that uh, when I'm talking to other artists is, how do I price my art, mm. right? And I know that was something that you, know, you struggled with a little bit early on in your career, many other, I think it's a, again, it's a very, very common challenge for many artists, especially starting out. Can you share how you figure that out and, uh, do you have any advice for new artists or emerging artists to kind of figure out what their demand is or what their price point should be for their art? Um, you know, you know, Mar, you know how challenging an issue this is. So I'm, I'm glad you yeah. coming back to it. You've seen it. You've seen it firsthand. Right, right. Um, pricing is... Pricing is one of those things that, and, and you know, we used to talk about this all the time, how you really can't allow, um, you have to sort of determine your own worth at some point. Um, but in doing so, you also have to look at the market, right? What will the market bear? Right. You know, it's, it, it works just like anything else. Um, any other form of business, any other product, you know, right. you right. have to, you have to be able, you have to be realistic about what the market will bear. Right. Um, so in saying that, um, there are a couple different, um, approaches to it. Um, I've seen people use formulas mm -hmm. like, um, length times width times two, length times width times two, you know, $2. Right. Multiply times the length times the width. Right. I've seen people use that. Um, that way, it eliminates all um, affinities. You know, you may have for the piece. It right. just makes it a strict calculation. You know, right. And it's right. based on size. Right. Now, um, I always found that formula to be problematic because, one, while size is important. There's so many other factors that are as well. Time, medium, um, complexity. Um, um, and, I mean, there's so many things factored in. And um, value, and, and value, right? Yeah. One of the things I've been uh, really emphasizing recently is that price and value are two totally different things. Absolutely. Right? So it, your, your perceived idea of price is not your customer's perceived idea of value so uh, most times not all always but most times if you add enough value the customer will pay whatever price 
That's right. Right? That's and right. So if you can create, you know, in the minds of your potential buyers and, and uh, collectors enough value, then you can justify a price point. Yeah. Like you said, you can get out of the formulas and, you know, get more into the, the value add. Like you said, how many hours have I put into this? Right. Oh, you know, what, uh, and, it, and then that kind of gets into provenance, you know, who, what other collectors own my art, you know, right. what makes the demand for my art what it is right. and things. But when you're starting out, you really don't have that provenance piece playing. Right. So you have to get, I think, more into creating a vibe, creating an experience that, that builds value. Right. One of the things that Maps and I were talking about yesterday, I'm sorry, Friday on our Zoom call was the packaging, right? Mm -hmm. Using QR codes on the packaging. When you receive my art or a print, you can you can take a chat, a photo of a QR code of the label app attached to it that sends you somewhere else and gives you a whole nother experience. It gives you an artist bio, it may give you, it may give you an artist bio, or it may give you the description of the piece. Mm -hmm. It may give you a video of me creating, the, a process video of me creating the piece. Mm -hmm. Now you have, instead of a $200 piece, you have a $2,000 piece because you've given them enough value. Right, right. So that's some of the things that I've been trying to share that you don't have to just look at it as, okay, well, Maybe this piece should go for one hundred fifty dollars. Right. If you want to make more than one hundred fifty dollars, create more value for it. Right. So, and, it's, it's, you know, that's, that's, and, and and the thing about value, value is another one of those things that's sort of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's that you know, value is it, it it can it can also be just perception. Like you can you can create um, the perception of value. Um, your story, you know, yeah, yeah. people buy art based on just who the artist is, you know, Absolutely. so, I mean, there's so many pricing is one of those really, 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 really tricky things. <laughs> um, my, yeah. my, my best advice to, to artists as it relates to pricing is almost like, be honest, you know, yeah. that's my, I and mean, that's my advice for almost anything as it relates to art. Like, just be right. honest, bro. Just be honest about, right about what you're doing, um, be honest about um, what you what you really what you really believe is is justified. Right. You know, like right. don't just throw a number out there and see if it sticks, you know? Yeah. Be yeah. honest about it. Be honest about what you're asking because integrity goes a million miles in this business. And that's true. You know, I was um, I was faced with uh, an issue with um, prints, right? I don't want to go into the details of it, but okay. there was a there was a there was an issue about like price points for prints, and okay. I was like, um, I was like, listen, I don't um, I don't give away prints. I don't just give them. I don't give away prints. I do. Right. At this point, you know, I do limited runs of my prints. Right. And I I, I charge for them. Right. You know? But right. In, in doing so, you know, it's all relative, right? I was telling a story about when I um I saw Tim Akamura's um prints down at, at Basel a few years ago. It's the first time he had ever done print. He didn't do prints. He right. refused to do prints. Right. He only sold original originals. He didn't believe in it. A gallerist convinced him to do it, finally. Right. So he was like, okay, okay, fine. So he did like a really, really small, like a limited run, like one print of this painting, one print of that painting. And when we got, when we saw his booth and we didn't even know he was doing prints at this time, um, the lady, you know, told us the story. She was like, yeah, he, he just decided. He just decided to do prints. This is the first time he's selling prints. And Meg Ryan, Meg Ryan's husband mm. came in to this, it was at Pulse. At, um, at, at, at our Basel. It was at okay. the Pulse show. Okay. And he was like, he walked in, he saw that piece. It was like, I got to have it. 30 grand. <laughs> One print. Wow. 
30 wow. grand. Yeah. A print. Yeah. Yeah. See? So I'm like, it's all it's all still relative, right? Yeah. But yes. for me, this is where I landed with my prints. And I would rather I would rather sell one or two of these than to sell fifty at you know. Exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? I'm you, you know how it works, Amal. You've been collecting. You know how collecting works. Yeah, yeah. And that's something to, to, to consider. Like, do you want to just be a person that's creating art and throwing art out there, or do you want people people to collect your work and there actually be some value yes. in the pieces that they're collecting? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is a very important uh, decision I believe artists have to make. You know, and as I believe you mature and you grow in your art practice, those decisions become tougher and tougher. Yeah. Because yeah. again, you, you you're you're looking to maintain the integrity of your work. You're looking to grow the value of your work, and it's not so much now. And it's not just about just getting in homes. Yeah. You got to think about you know a few few steps down the road. Yeah. You know, and longevity. So. Yeah. Uh, very great advice, and I appreciate you for that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I want to I want to wrap up. I, I, I want to ask you two. I want to ask you one more question, and then we're gonna wrap up with a little fun, uh, a little fun exercise. But before we get to the exercise, just let us know, you know, in the viewers, what do you have? What's next for Levi Levi Robinson? What's next on the plate? Oh boy, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Things are moving so fast. Uh, it's happening so fast. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, one thing. One thing I could say. Um, I could tell you about. I've been. I've been keeping this close to the vest. But um, myself and a couple of partners, we're working on. Um, we're working on a place. You know. Um, where we'll nice. be. You know, displaying our own work. Um, nice. And that's 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 an exciting thing that's going on. Um, awesome. Awesome. Uh, outside of that, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm painting, um, uh, I'll probably, you know, depending on what, what happens with COVID, you know, I'll, I'll likely do, you know, try to get to a couple festivals, work out with a couple festivals we're working on. We got a bunch, I got a bunch of festivals in the, in the works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. COVID, it's, everything is so COVID right. dependent, you know, we just, right. it just depends, you know. Right. So right. in the meantime, you know, um. I'll just, you know, I'll just continue just doing what I'm doing. And um, yeah. I got to say, you know, I got to give a lot of love to the Paints Institute. They um, they keep a lot of balls moving. Yeah. And um, they put a lot of question marks in my life, you know. So yeah. Yeah. who knows? We'll see. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> we'll see what's All next. All right, man. Well, I have, uh, you know, I've been, I have, I've had this idea that I wanted to play with, you know, for, a couple years now, you know how MTV and different other outlets, uh, media outlets and magazines, have, they'll do their top 10 or their top five MCs of all time, or you'll have the barbershop talk of who who the top, you know, uh, basketball players, who's the GOAT, you know. I wanna have that in art, right? So if you can off the top of your head, we could do five or three, whatever you feel comfortable with, but in terms of GOAT type status or your favorite visual artist, and it, don't, it doesn't have to just be painters, it could be sculptors or photographers, but your top five visual artists of all time. Can you run those off? Oh, wow. Um, my top five. So, Ooh, that's tough. I'm gonna go. It doesn't have to be in any particular order, right? No, no, no particular order. All right. Um, I'm gonna go. Ernie Barnes. I knew that was gonna be on the list. Did you? <laughs> Ernie Barnes. Yeah. Um, Gustav Klimt. Mm. Um, Paul Goodnight. Mm. Nice. 
Um, uh, Rembrandt. Got to go Rembrandt. Okay. Um, that's four, isn't it? Oh, that's four. Got one left. One left. Uh, uh, Rembrandt. Nice. Yeah, definitely Rembrandt. And um, yeah, it's so tough. Um, always good if you want to start with four. That's a, right, that's, let me start. Let me start with four. Let me start with four. That's a good solid floor. Four right there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Those. Those are. My, those are my guys, yo. Those are my guys. Yeah. Yeah. I see, I see some of the influence in your work though. Although lately I have to say, you've been finding a lane or you've been filing, I feel, I feel like you've been finding a style that's really unique to yourself. You know, you've been, you, you've been taking it to a whole nother level, level brother. I'm getting there, bro. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. You know what I mean? And it, the, the, the crazy thing about that is it, it, the, it finds you, you yeah. know? I've been thinking all along, you know, all this time that I gotta find, I gotta find my stuff, I gotta find what, you know, yeah. it finds you. Yeah. You yeah. know, just you just keep doing the work. It's just like everything, right? right. Um, they say success has to find you working. Mm. You know, mm. you gotta be, you know, you can't just sit around waiting for it. You gotta, you know, you gotta work. You know, you gotta work, and yeah. you know, as you work, you know, the magic starts to happen. You know, it doesn't happen the other way around. You don't just wake up and magic happens, you know. Mm. You gotta you kinda gotta do the work, you know, and it'll find you. And um, that's kind of what's happening to me. It's just it's starting to find me, you know. Mm. And uh, I'm I'm enjoying I'm enjoying it, man. I gotta say this. Yeah, 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 definitely. Talked about my beginnings. Okay. And I skip I skip the postmodern part of okay. my beginnings. I went okay. to the very beginning and skipped the full. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I have to say, I have to mention the role, the part that you played. Uh that can't go without saying. So my club, man. Appreciate the part, the part that I have to share with your audience is when at when I reached a certain point in my life and I had put, I had sort of put you know the brush and the, and the you know and the and the, you know the pen the pencil I had put them away, um, sort of tucked them away. Um, at that point, I um, one second, sorry. At that point in my life, I had sort of put them away, you know, a little bit, and um, I, I went through something in my life that stripped away you know one of those things marlon was talking about earlier about discomfort like and and how um a lot of times great things happen in your life when you're you're, you're taken out of your comfort zone um i have been taken out of my comfort zone and i did my first exhibit and marlon and i gotta i gotta put rob in there you know yeah. Pam as well. Yeah, but yeah. They they came out and they they not only did they support me, but they encouraged me, you know, to to make the move in the first place. Um I did the show and the painting that I had placed in the show was the first one to sell that night. And the way that the way that your your eyes lit up that night. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And just the way from that point on, man, you got behind me, you know, yeah, the yeah. word, the words that I recall from that night were, yo, we got to get this guy. We got to get him to do that. He got to keep doing this. Yeah. 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 And, um, that, that right there, um, that marked a big part of that, my beginning story, you know, right. right. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'll forever be grateful for that, bro. Forever. I appreciate that, man. That's, that's definitely much love, man. I appreciate you sharing those flowers, yeah. and I, I'm just I'm just honored, and I, I feel humbled to be part of the journey, man. And and I'm you know I'm here, gonna stay you know uh, one of your biggest supporters and advocates, 
and we just got to keep growing, man. And I love what you just said, you know, you know, just stay busy and let, you know, let your style and let success find you, you know, and that's, that's what I'm committed to doing. And he's doing a good job of it, bro. You're doing a real good job of it. I'm proud of you too, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> proud of you too. Oh, and, and Marlon didn't just put, he didn't just speak it. He put his money where his mouth is. He was one of my early collectors as well. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have two original Levi Robinson pieces. That's right. I hold on to. <laughs> Let them grow in value and pass on to my kids. But uh, yeah, they're two. Of uh, of the, of, I love I love all my art as uh, as much you know they like children to me at this point but the <laughs> two of my you know going back to like you said they're two of my first uh, original pieces in my collection and uh, you know they're my pride and joy man right in the, the forefront of my home when you come up to the up the stairs and you get into my house you know you see them you know and they're the centerpieces of our house so. And 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 it's interesting because most people who visit, you know, B Sharp is the the piano player. He's the the favorite. Really? Yeah. Without me even saying or prompting anybody, they're all like, "Oh my gosh, who painted that? I love this piece." You know, white, black, no matter who comes, they all love that piece. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. And, uh, the eyes capture me immediately, and I think it does the same for everybody. So they're just they're just drawing in. Uh, I remember you originally painted it with the eyes open. You did a great thing by closing the eyes. Yeah. It more, more mystery and more dynamic. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, man. You know, I, you know, we. I don't want. I know you, busy, man, and you know, um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, any more of your time, but. Again, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for sharing this moment with me. And we got to do it again in the future. Yes, sir. All Look right. Look forward to it, bro. Peace. All right. Peace.